Number six, a spring has a length of 0.2 meters when a 0.3 kilogram mass hangs from it and a length of 0.75 meters when a 1.95 kilogram mass hangs from it. Uh, what is the force constant of the spring? All right, so uh, basically what they told us, it's a little tricky here, but the length of the spring when a 0.3 kilogram mass hangs from it is going to be 0.2 meters. I showed the negative sign there because it's, you know, downward, right? And then uh, similarly, the length of the spring is going to be uh, 0.75, negative uh, 0.75 meters when a 1.95 kilogram mass hangs from it. Now, the thing though is, right, when we think about Hooke's Law, if we're finding then just the force that's that the spring will exert, this X kind of represents the uh, change in displacement from rest, right, from resting length. So that's not exactly what these values are, right? If, if I take this picture to mean my resting length, that means that I would need to plug in this particular distance here, right, if I, if I knew it. Um, to find then the uh, spring constant uh, for this scenario, or I would take this straight line then with this, and I need to find this distance, all right, to find the spring constant with that mass. Interestingly enough, though, if I were to, I'm just trying to think about how, interestingly enough, we, we have these two examples, right? And we know that there is a certain change in length of the total spring, okay? Um, for these two examples, and there's two different masses on them. What I can actually do here is I can bait, I can use Hooke's law, but I can just kind of manipulate it slightly, right? I'm going to plug in something here that the change in the force, all right, that the spring is exerting will be equal to the negative K multiplied by then the change in displacement, total displacement of the spring, okay? What I can basically... Um, let me not, yeah, let me not complicate this too much, all right? So basically what, I, basically what I can do is I can take then the force that's that the spring would be exerting in the, let's call this the second case, this is the first case, and this is the unstrained case. I can take the force in the second case and subtract it from the force that the spring is exerting on that weight in the first case, and that will then be equal to negative K times then the displacement right, of the spring in the second case minus then the spring in the first case. And now what I realize is if I want to solve for k here, I can simply just algebraically manipulate this, right, and actually let me not bring the negative sign over, I'll do it all in one step. So k will then be equal to negative the force in the second case that the spring is exerting minus the force in the first case that the spring is exerting, divided then by the uh, change in displacement basically between the two cases, right? So... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically plug in the values. Now the force that the spring is exerting in this case is equal to the weight of that object, right? We talked about that for the past, you know, take a look at any question one through four. I kind of went through this in much more detail with pictures and stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to plug in the force in the second case. That's going to be the mass of the second object there multiplied by gravity minus then the mass of the first object, mass of the first object multiplied by gravity all then divided now by the displacement for that second object minus the displacement for the first object, okay? And here we go. So negative, now the mass of the second object was 1.95 kilograms multiplied by then 9.8 minus then the first object, which was 0 0.3, uh, then multiplied by 9.8, okay? And now this whole thing divided by the second displacement, which is negative 0.75 meters, then minus now the first case, right, which is a negative 0.2. And if I plug everything in, we're going to come up with K. So uh, let's do it. So 1.9, and if you notice, everything's going to be positive here, all right? The, the whole value will be positive overall, which it should be. So 1.95 times a 9.8 minus then 0.3 times 9.8, and then divide that now by basically 0.75 minus 0.2 more or less and it's gonna be 29.4. Okay, so this works out to be 29.4 newtons per meter. And that takes care of K. Okay, all right, and now for part B. So it says, what is the unloaded length of the spring? All right, so let's first start with Hooke's law over here. All right, it says that the force that the spring will exert on an object will be equal to negative of the spring constant of the spring multiplied then by the change in displacement of the spring. Okay, so now let's first simply solve, okay, one of these two cases, either number one or number two, it doesn't matter, for 
change in displacement. You might say, well, isn't this just the change in displacement, the points, negative points of five? Well, no, no, no. The change in displacement here in Hooke's law is going to represent, okay, remember I altered it slightly for letter A, but in terms of Hooke's law without the change in the force here, just the force that is uh, that the spring is exerting on an object, this X here represents the difference in length between the strain length and the unstrained length. Okay, basically represents the amount is compressed, the spring, or stretched. Okay, not the total uh, chain, not the total length, basically. So, in other words, I can solve this equation algebraically for delta x, right? And if I do that, then it's going to work out to be look something like this: negative force of the spring divided then by k. All right, and now why don't we simply plug in the values? Now remember that the force that the spring is exerting is going to be the same thing, and we've done this in the past problems right, one through four, I did detailed pictures here, but the uh, force in the, that the spring is exerting is, is basically the same thing as the weight that's placed on that spring, okay, so the weight that's placed on the spring of the weight of the object, and we're going to divide that now by the spring constant, when I do that, we're going to find the strained, the, the change in position from the unstrained length to the strained length, all right, if I just plug in the values now, the weight of the object here, we're going to take case two to be the example. It doesn't matter. You could have done case one. Is going to be the mass. So 1.95 multiply them by 9.8, right, which is gravity. Oops, one second. 9.8. And then all divided by now k, which is going to be what we found, 29.4. And what do we get? So uh, 1.95 times 9.8 divided by 29.4. And we get a value of about 0.65, right? And this is negative now. All right, so this is going to be negative uh, 0 0.65, okay? So this represents now the change in length, right, from the unstrained position to the strained position for number two. That's what this value represents. Now, consider this, that this total distance right here, the 0.75, is the total length of the spring in case number two. But I know that the difference in length now from the unstrained length to the fully strained length is negative 0.65. In other words, I know this distance right here. Let's say that if I assume that this was the unstrained length, right, I'm just going to dot a little line on over here, okay, that this point right here to the top represented the unstrained unstrain length, and now the strain length is what we just found, right? That's going to be the negative 0 0.65 meters, okay? I didn't put in the unit there, but you know that that's meters, all right? Now, let me ask you a question. If you know that the total distance here from the top to the bottom was negative 0.75, and I'm telling you now that the distance from this point to all the way to the bottom, right, the strain length is going to be negative 0.65. What's the unstrained length? Simple, right? It's going to be negative 0.1, okay? It's just the difference. So the unstrained length of the spring, the unloaded length, in other words, right? I'm going to write x sub u is going to be, or I could label it y, it really doesn't matter, is going to be negative 0 0.1 meters, all right? 0 point, point, excuse me, negative 0 0.100 meters, okay? Now, technically, this, the sign only indicates the direction, Right, and that should kind of make sense because I took my zero point to be the top part of where the spring is hanging from. But I mean, if you had to, what's the unloaded length? You could just label it as point one. It doesn't really matter. Okay, the sign is just telling you direction. But if we're, you know, what's the unloaded length? Well, what's the length of it? Is it the displacement or is it a length? Right, it's not technically a displacement. It's more just a, a, the length of the object, the distance of the object. It's a scalar. So you can basically write this just as the you know, uh, u sub l, the unloaded length now is 0.1 meters, all right? So hopefully that helps, guys. Please give us a hand if this video helped you out at all by hitting that subscribe button and telling your friends, all right? We appreciate it very much. Take care.